Welcome to Shark River Machine. My name is Steve and this is Shark Bits episode number 20. I've got a lot to cover so let's get started. I'm going to start out with some viewer mail. I received uh, some stickers from Max Grant Swan Valley Machine. Uh, he's down in Australia, Western Australia, and he was one of the winners of Emma's Spare Room Workshop Toolmaking Competition uh, that we sponsored at the Bar Z. So he was one of the winners and sent me a set of his stickers. So thank you, Max. This past week, I was in Lancaster County. The town is Kinzers, and it was attended the Rough and Tumble 72nd Annual Thresherman's Reunion. And it's a big steam meet, a lot of the old uh, make and break hit and miss engines, oil pole tractors, they've got a Shea steam engine there, a line machine shop, and a huge swap meet. And I spent a lot of time in the swap meet. Also had a chance to meet up with a couple of my subscribers and a fellow YouTuber. I met Chirpy uh, from Chirpy's Tinkering. It was great to meet him. We spent a little bit of time talking. and We were actually going through the uh, swap meet about the same time. I was just a couple tables ahead of him, fortunately. I made out, okay, things are getting a little bit stale there, year after year, we see the same vendors coming back, but there's always a few treasures, and I, I found it this year. One of the pieces that I picked up was a nice brand new Jacobs 3 8 chuck. It's got a half inch uh, threaded base on it and actually going to be making an arbor for that. That will be the machine content for today's shark bit. I have been looking for a long time for Starrett hook rule and this one isn't in the greatest shape but the price was right. I picked it up and this one is gorgeous. This one is a nine inch and it's in beautiful condition. It's a Starrett number 604R. Uh, that was one of the finds for the day. I also picked up a Starrett number 91B tap wrench. It's a beautiful piece. Looks like new. One of the guys had a bunch of uh, slitting saws. He had a whole bin full of them at a buck a piece, so I grabbed a handful of slitting saws. They always come in handy. On my way out, I saw this. It's another Jacob's Chuck with a number more two Morse taper, which I really didn't have a use for. But it was a good price. It was sitting there. I just couldn't leave it sit there. And ironically, the following day, I bought a lathe. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And guess what? It's got a number two Morse taper tailstock. So that'll come in handy. Another piece that I picked up was this nice little sign bar. Appears to be shop made, very nicely done. But the prize for the weekend, and I'm going to take and reposition the camera for this. This was the prize for the weekend. I walked by it a couple of times, and I kept coming back to it. And this is a shop made piece. Very nicely done. 
and it is an adjustable sign plate. It's a five inch center to center and it's quarter 28 threaded holes in it for the hole down and it's also got holes drilled on the side with these uh, fences and the screws come with it so you can screw a fence on it if you want It'd be like that so it's a beautiful piece very nicely done it's got a little bit of very very light surface rust on it and I'm gonna go over it and clean it up good put it on the uh, surface plate and check it out and I may even run it through the grinder just to to freshen up the working service I also made a few purchases one of my YouTube subscribers and a young man that has had a channel and I'm not sure exactly what happened he isn't sure what happened but his channel has been taken down um, it was called Precision Machine his name is Ed and for some reason his, his channel was deleted and he's going to be building a new one but he uh, listed a few items on the used tools uh, use machinist tools on Facebook and there was one piece in particular that I had an interest in and this is a Mitutoyo 6 inch dial caliper I have another one but I like to have them in a couple of different places in the shop and this one this one works beautifully it's nice and smooth so that was one of the purchases that I made from Ed. And since I already had something coming from him, I asked him what else he had. And lo and behold, he had a number two Morse taper live center. So now I have a live center for the new lathe that's coming. We'll talk about that later. I also purchased this quad square from him and I'll be playing around with that over on the surface plate and my squareness comparator but that's a nice standard and then he also included a few Morse taper drill bits Morse taper number two drill bits. I asked him if he had anything over half inch and he sent me three of them and he added a few items into the mix that I didn't ask for. Uh, he sent me this nice caliper. They always come in handy. I don't see a manufacturer listed on it but it looks like one maybe from general. He also included a little ball peen hammer. I love these little two ounce ball peen hammers. I have a couple of them around the shop and he threw that one in to the mix. And he also sent me a few uh, diamond, eighth inch diamond points that I can use on my surface grinder. So thank you, Ed. We have an event coming up. It's a YouTube event, and it has been it's the brainchild of Emma Ritson and John Creasy of the YouTube Machinists Facebook page. And it's called Tips Blitz 19. And what's going to happen? is on September 15th at a specified time I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm going to foul it up at a specified time 
everyone that is participating in tip splits is going to make their video live at all at the same time. And as of the taping of this video, there were an excess of 70 YouTubers that have said that they were going to participate in it. Big names, little names, many of them that you've heard of, some that you haven't. And I'm going to be in the tips blitz. I will include a link in the description if you're interested in participating in it. It's not too late. You've still got time. It's a five minute video. So there's still time. So I'm getting ready to record mine and I that's where this Chuck comes in. <laughs> I was uh, it's a nice new Chuck. I think it'll fit the video uh, very nicely and so in order to prepare f to shoot that video we're going to go over to the lathe and I'm going to make an arbor to mount this chuck. I'm making this out of a piece of stress proof one of my favorite materials to use for and I'm going to turn it between centers. So my finish length will be three inches. So I got a piece of stock almost three inches long. I'm going to face it off, and center drill it, and flip it around and do the other side. And in order to keep it concentric, I am going to turn it between centers. I'm going to set up the lathe to turn between centers now. I'm going to cut it back two inches down to half inch. bring you back when I get down to my finished cuts. Okay, I'm at 6 or at 514 so I'm going to cut that in half. I'm going to take 7 off and measure it again. OK. 
Okay. According to the micrometer, I got eight thousandths to go. Okay, right on the money. Let's see how it fits the holder. Beautiful. After I'm done turning it, I'll be milling a flat on it so that the set screws don't mar it up. Okay, let's turn it around and then I'll cut the other side. I mounted it up with uh, another smaller lathe dog and put a piece of shim in between so I wouldn't mar the surface. Now I'm going to turn this down also to half inch but I'm going to go a few thousandths under because that's going to be threaded and then I'll leave a square shoulder for the uh, to square it up when I tighten it up on the chuck. We've got about 50 thousandths to go. And one under now, we'll go a couple more thousands under to uh, cut the threads. A little easier only. Okay, I'm about two and a half under, which is fine. That's I was going for three, but two and a half will that's good in my book. Put a uh, chamfer on the edge. Where's my chamfer tool? There it is. I miscalculated a little bit and the threads are about a quarter of an inch too long so I gotta cut it back about a quarter of an inch
Okay, it's tied up against the shoulder now. I'm pretty happy with that. Runs pretty true. Looks good. Now I'm going to take it over to the milling machine and cut the flat on it. And it will be done. I've made a couple references to a new lathe and last weekend when I was out in Pennsylvania I found a machine dealer that I've been driving by for 35 years never stopped in there thinking that he was a woodworking supply. Not that I don't do woodworking, but I just didn't have really have the interest. Well, I decided to stop in there one day. Well, boy was I wrong. And I went up and he had a bunch of used equipment. And there were two Atlas lathes there. One of them had a turret on it. Uh, a little bit longer. They were both 10 inch and so I started thinking about it. Well I went back a week later and the one with the turret was on consignment and it was just much too expensive for what it was. So I went and looked at the other one. It's in good shape. It's an Atlas model 10F and it's got quick change gears. I decided if I was going to buy another lathe that had to have quick change gears. I had an Atlas 9 inch that I sold. Uh, it didn't have quick change gears. I had an opportunity to get it back and I decided I didn't want it back without it. I've been using the Atlas 618 for several years now and I'm going to keep one of them. I actually have three. I have two that are usable and one for spare parts. So I'm going to be rebuilding one to a like new condition and I'll have one available for sale at some point. So uh, I'll let you know when that, when that is. But this weekend I will be going out and picking up the lathe and in order to fit it in my Ford Escape, I made a small pallet that fits and levels out the floor because when you put the seats down, the floor isn't level. So I leveled out the floor and I have just a couple of sh video shots of that. So I will have a complete video on picking that lathe up and going over it at some point. plan is to slide the lathe in on this board so I've got to raise the back up a little bit it's the, when you fold the seats down they end up with a couple inch gap I'm going to see what I can find to fill in the gap work. Let me just screw it all together.
I've got several sets of these tie downs. And they've got hooks on the inside. So I've got them here. I've got a couple up front in the uh, in the seats that I can strap it all in. So we're ready to go.